we want to make Clio so compelling and accessible that people who are seeking legal services will actually look for lawyers who use Clio. Because if they know that if, they're, if that law, law firm is using Clio, they're going to get a great, amazing experience with that law firm. It's going to be affordable. The communication will be great. The legal advice will be awesome. And to break that down even further, we say there's three customer problems that we are focused on solving. The first one is that we want to help law firms be more productive and efficient. We saw that earlier this morning in the Legal Trends Report that utilization rates are far too low in the legal space. And a lot of the changes you saw in new Clio are to, to make that number shrink a lot. The second one is to help you grow and manage your business. We want to provide you the insights that you need in order to get better ideas about how to manage your customers, how to convert more of the referrals that you get. And the third one is to provide an exceptional customer experience. Your customers aren't just signing up to get good legal advice. They're also signing up because they're looking for someone who's a great source of counsel. So it's really important that we provide you the tools that allow you to do that. We think we have three really unique values that separate us from a lot of other legal technology companies. The first one is being customer obsessed. Over the past year and a half, we've done over 600 hours of customer interviews. We've been on site for over 60 days uh, all across the country. We've reviewed over 3,000 customer survey comments. We've had over 1,200 sales requests. And last year, we had over 25 staff days at ClioCon. This year, we have 19 people from our product team, so we're looking at 38 staff days, so even more folks that are really looking forward to getting feedback. Here's a few photos of some of the customers we've visited. Um, I don't know if anyone from Vila Wood Law is here. Anyone in the room from Dallas? Oh, in the back. Awesome. Sweet. Um, so I was there for two days uh, back in June. We also got Rose Sanders and Bovernick in uh, Portland. We've got the Community Association Law Group. And we've got, this is Kristen Gaston and her firm. Uh, we've also got uh, Patrick Pallas from Pallas Law. And I think I see Sianna in the front. We've gone down to their office a couple times already. He was in the, uh, the video that we showed earlier. Uh, and he's also come up to our office. He spent a day with his leadership team uh, in our office. We were gathering a lot of great feedback from him. And we visited folks from across the country. Uh, I've been in Dallas, San Francisco, Tampa, the Boston, New York. We go all over the place. And we've also spoken with customers from practically every corner of the country. We're not just located just talking to folks in Seattle who are close to our office. We will come to you. And I'm a sucker for good food and good restaurants. And if you, you have a great city with good restaurants, I'd love to come out. I can make, make an excuse for that. I think Jack will sign off on that. If, uh, <laughs> regardless of Hawaii, if it comes up, I'm happy to go out there. Um, so just let us know uh, anytime there's, there's an opportunity for that. OK, so you're probably then thinking, well, you've done all these visits, but so what do you, what do, you do with those? So one thing we know is that uh, the product managers and the designers are, are the primary teams that are out on the road meeting our customers and talking to them and doing customer interviews. But one thing we want to make sure is that everybody at Clio understands our customers. So we built a set of customer personas to understand the different roles in every law office. From solo attorneys to a managing partner in a larger firm, we want to make sure that developers, support staff, sales teams, they all understand what are the needs of our customers, what is it that we can do to achieve success. So they're not personas that, that mar they're not marketing personas that we use around, uh, you know, what's the demographic, how much money do they make, but they focus on things like, what's a successful outcome? What are the pain points that any given customer has? And that helps us focus on what are we going to solve first and what looks like success for those people. Now, not only do we, do we kind of build these profiles, but once we've done all the research and we've started to think through the ideas of what we've done, uh, we, we don't want to assume that we know the solution right away. So when we start prototyping, prototyping is kind of creating these kind of crude, um, crude well, you know, most of you probably understand what a prototype is. But we build these, and we'd go into usability testing. So here's an example of us taking one of our customers through the new calendar, working through, do they understand the information they're seeing? Do they understand how to create a new event? Can they parse the information that they're seeing on screen? Does it make sense to them? And when we get that feedback, we iterate on that and make sure that we're solving the things that uh, we, we couldn't just come up with on our own. So this customer obsession uh, is, starts, hap, starts at the very beginning where we talk to our customers, but we don't let up. Once we, once we get that, we keep working through that. Last year at ClioCon, we actually released 
what I consider our very first expression of the new Clio experience. Some of you may recognize the iOS app. This was our first product that we focused on, on this methodology, where we spoke to our customers and interviewed and dug deep to understand the problems that we needed to solve. So last year on iOS, we launched the new home screen. The home screen pulled together your tasks, your upcoming meeting events, and the recent matters, the things that you would need if you were about to go to bed and wanted to know what's happening tomorrow that I need to be mentally prepared for, or when you wake up in the morning and say, when do I need to be at the office to take a call? These are the things that we understood we needed to bring to our customers to achieve success for them. We brought tab navigation to make it easier for every customer to navigate through the application because their thumb is at the bottom of the screen. And also, uh, as I heard applause for earlier in Jack's keynote, we brought Global Create to our customers for the very first time. And Global Create was, was a, uh, number one, it was a fantastic addition that we got lots of great feedback on. But there was a lot of thinking that went into crafting Global Create. Uh, one thing we found in our data is that the number one created object in the Global Create menu are time entries. People on the go or moving uh, or even at their desk working on Clio might still use a phone to start a time entry. Now, you may think if it's the most popular object, is it the thing that we should put at the very top of the page as the very first item? Well, no. We wanted to put it closer to your thumb. So time entry actually sits almost directly under your thumb after you invoke that menu. We actually have our most often used objects in that list in the lower half of that menu. And that gets to the second point that we think is a unique value. So the first point was obsessing about our customers. And the second one we talk about is inventing on your behalf. We have over 150,000 customers that use Clio, so lots of different feedback. And as you'll meet different attorneys here, different paralegals, and different office managers here, you're going to find everybody seems to have a different way of doing things. And that's normal. Uh, it's, there's a, those of you who are real estate uh, lawyers, those of you IP lawyers, family law uh, practitioners, everyone has a different approach. So we can't just gather the feedback, listen to it, and apply it. We have to actually really think deeply about what we're trying to do with the iPhone app and the Global Create. We really thought about the little details. Like, we don't want you to have to reach and bend your thumb too much to create a time entry. We want to simplify that. So inventing is hugely important for us. I'm ready to talk about new Clio. So you got a 10-minute preview from Jack. Uh, what did you think? A little thumbs up? <laughs> oh, what's up? OK. So we've had a couple hundred customers who've been using the new Clio for about a month now, trying it out, giving us feedback. And I want to share with you some of the unsolicited feedback that we received. So uh, Sienna, who's in the third row here, uh, <laughs> mentioned, I think within about 10 minutes after joining the, the Slack channel, that she loved the new layout. And the speed was a great improvement. We have Doug Edmonds. I think Doug is in here. I think Real I just five. saw him. Where's, where's Doug? <laughs> Doug? Oh, there, there's Doug. He said, love the new look of the, the new Matters page. Uh, Momentum Law posted on Twitter. Thing. They were also loving it as, as well. And we also saw earlier this morning, Greg McLawson had a lot to say about it as well. Uh, he, a little bit of a potty mouth, which we like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jen Reynolds chimed in as well with a little here, here. She really loved that as well. So we're really excited about that. Uh, we're going to show you the new Clio in three sections over the next 20 minutes or so. The first section is some of the foundational things that, that we've done. Jack showed you a little bit about it. Ernie's going to dig a little bit deeper. Because one of our goals is to attend to a lot of the little details that really make our life a lot easier, that reduce cognitive load for your day-to-day -day job. We want you to have a smile on your face when you use Clio. Clio should not be a frustration. So the sec second section will be about everything tied to case management, the new calendar, timekeeper, the, new, uh, the matters uh, section of the app. And then finally, we're going to walk you through billing and payments. So we'll start with the foundation first. Ernie? Great. So one thing to keep in mind when we talk about the new Clio experience, and Jack touched on it in his keynote, is that um, new Clio is not a visual redesign. It is not a makeover. It required us to kind of go to the depths of Clio and re-plumb a lot of things. We needed to rethink and reinvent to make sure that we were solving real problems that exist today, and not just kind of stacking things onto each other. So I'm going to talk about a few foundational pieces that make up the new Clio experience. I'm going to try to go through this pretty quickly. So number one, 
design language. Design language, fancy term for what we consider a common vocabulary visually that we use to speak to all the customers. Now, the reason we, we think of it as design language is we need to make sure that we're communicating effectively and you understand what we're saying. So some examples of that would be the way that we've been rethinking about how our buttons look. Now, this is one example from our design language. And, and what we see on the left side are what we think are primary buttons. These are the buttons that are most likely going to drive you through the workflows that you're trying to complete. You may be saving a new matter, you may be submitting a form, but these are the buttons that are probably the 90% button that you're going to want to use to move forward. In the middle, we have a secondary buttons, things like cancel. Maybe these are the actions that you still need to have handy, you don't want to look for them, but they're, they're much less likely to be the thing you want to do. So visually, we prioritize those much differently so that you're much more likely to gravitate towards primary actions and go ahead and move forward in the flow. On the right side, we have what we call the destructive buttons. We want to make sure that you don't ever accidentally delete something. So by assigning red as a part of the visual language to it, you're going to see a red button. You're going to know, don't push that unless you need to. So we're trying to reduce the amount of time that you spend reading. You're able to scan the buttons quickly and take action with less thinking. A second piece of our design language focuses on our type hierarchy. We wanted to make sure that Clio was really easy to use. And a part of that is being able to scan pages for information very easily. By having a clear and consistent type hierarchy across the entire application, you can know that whether you're in billing or whether you're in your matters, you're going to be able to look for the same uh, size and font weight and to know that that's going to represent a section title or a card. So you're going to be able to scan that page much more quickly to get to the information that you're looking for. We also have uh, the hyperlinks. Um, any link you can click on in Clio is now going to be blue and underlined. What you'll see in the beta if you try today is that we don't have every object yet. We're working through that. We're still in a beta state. And as we roll out and reinvent some of our, our features still, we're going to be adding those. But our intention is to make sure that everything that you can create in Clio of importance, we're going to prioritize, is going to be available. We wanted to make sure, again, to the point of uh, customers telling us, you know, we really value screen real estate. And a lot of customers ask for more information on screen. And so we've made sure that that navigation could be moved out of the way. We're seeing less and less use of navigation and more and more use of search. I think Google kind of shook things up in the industry a little bit. I think we'll see a continuing move towards search being the primary method that you're going to get the work you need done. Customers would tell us, we move between the same group of matters throughout the week. We're kind of constantly working through that. So I really rely on this fantastic tool that's buried in the bottom right of your page that I often have to scroll down to. So we put it in the top bar, and now you can access it from anywhere. It doesn't matter how far down the screen, that's going to be docked to the very top of your screen so you can access it really quickly. And you're going to see the same matters. Moving to the right, um, we have the timer. So anytime you start any piece of work, you get a phone call, you can just tap on the timer, and that will start, uh, start the timer immediately. And you don't have to start filling out details until you're done doing that work. So get off the phone call, hit stop on that. It's going to pop up a pop-up that you can then enter. Who is the client? What's the matter I was working on? We want to make sure that you get paid for all of your time. And like Jack mentioned, as he stole my thunder with Global Create, I was so excited to announce today, Global Create's coming to the web, and I think that's going to be a, a really awesome change. The next section I want to talk about, everything in case management, so creating matters, tracking your time, the calendars, and, and using search. So we earlier covered the, the old or the previous Create Matter page, and it's long. Half the page is white space. You could park a truck in there, put the state of Texas in there, put a cruise ship. Internally, we talked a lot about landing a jumbo jet on that runway <laughs> yeah. of white. So. And, and we see it in, in the full form that it's about four pages long. And let's say you don't even need to fill out everything. You just need to fill out three things. And you still have to scroll to the bottom of the page and then hit save. A lot of wasted uh, time there, a lot of wasted white space. So the new one, we've simplified it so much that you don't have to scroll anymore. It all fits in one page. There's only three required fields, and they're all at the top. And at the, very, at the bottom of the page, we've actually anchored the Save button. So you don't have to scroll up and down, even if you do have to fill in additional information, even if you have to add different fields to your matter, 
the save button's always at the bottom of your screen, always locked in there. And we do this across the entire application. So can, action buttons like save, delete, cancel, they're always going to be available to you. The other thing that we've done is we've added、uh, the related contact section. So when you're creating a new matter now, you can add your related contacts right while you're creating the matter. So, really simple. That's the real thing. That's how it actually works. So, really, you're not having, you'll see the safe bar stays in place and all your information is still there. So, it's much easier to manage、uh, your matters, whether you're creating them or you're having to edit them. So, in this case, add opposing counsel. Really simple. And it, Ernie will show you some of the details on how that actually plays out. So, Jack already previewed the、uh, new matters detail page with all of you. And, And like I mentioned, the, the focus as we were redesigning this is making sure that it was really scannable. So you'll see some of the design elements in,、uh, are what we call cards. A card is a visual separation. You'll see contact card in the top right. You'll see the financial card on the top left. Now, one thing we heard a lot about when we talked to users about our, our dashboard is a lot of customers would say, This is not relevant to me. I don't bill hourly. I work in contingency. This is just wasted space. So, one really great thing about the financial card that we're doing with, with the new Clio experience is it's going to be customizable. It's going to change. <laughs> yes, Sienna's excited about this. It's going to be able to change based on the and how you practice. So, we're going to be able to change it in a range, a whole range of different ways. So, if you're contingency, you're going to be able to record what percentage you might take from that. We want to make sure that we're meeting the needs of each user, not just a one size fits all approach, but depending on how you practice, you're going to be able to customize this and make it a lot more powerful. Like I mentioned with the contact card on the top right, another thing we learned from our customers, a lot of them went to the matters page just to find who the client was and then navigate to their contact information to be able to phone them. So we've pulled that information right into this page. Highly likely that you may need to talk to this person. So less navigation. I see clapping. I love clapping. <laughs> we want to take as many steps out of your hands as possible and make sure that when you say, hey, The most common things I do are these things. All right, how can we solve those for you? Now, last year,、uh, I mentioned iOS. I、uh, talked to a lot of customers about our iOS app, and, and there was great feedback. And one thing they talked to us about is timeline. They said, Timeline is amazing. It lets me know what's happening on a matter. When are you going to bring it to the web? Well, here it is, folks. It's more powerful than Firm Feed in that you have a lot more entries available to you. You're going to see more of what's happening. But the great thing is, if you're working with other people in your firm, you're going to be able to see what's happening. Did someone create a task? Did someone complete a task? It's a faster way for you to look at that matter and understand what's the current state of affairs, which is going to change from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. There's going to be differences. And instead of always having to ping that person who's working on saying, What have you done today? Are you done? How are things moving? You're going to be able to come to the matter details page and get a really fast overview to know what you may need to follow up on and what you need to do next. So that's matter creation, matter edit, and the matter detail page. So let's talk a bit about time tracking. Jack covered it a little bit、uh, as well earlier. And we've already gotten some feedback.、Uh, Jason Morris from Roundtable Law said that he took a look at our new timer on mobile and on web and decided to drop his toggle subscription. Jason's now able to get rid of that subscription because we've improved the time, timer so much for him. And it's really been a big focus of ours to deliver more value to you. And so in the new, new timekeeper, there's two pieces. Uh, obviously, the, the timer widget we've You've noticed in the previous Clio experience, it was recently added a few months ago, but we've now also added the timekeeper. You'll be able to see all the time that, that you've had for the day with a little summary at the very top. In this case, three hours and 40 minutes of log time. And the other feature that's really relevant is I, I would imagine a lot of you are often working on the same thing day after day. And you're making time entries for that. And the way it currently works in, in Clio is that if you created a time entry yesterday for a contract that you're reviewing and you're still working on it for the same client now, you'd have to go create a duplicate time entry or you restart it and it turns into this nine hour time entry、right? from yesterday, not even for today. With the new timekeeper, if you go back to yesterday, find that entry and start it up again, it'll automatically duplicate that entry for today. So, that's the end of having to create duplicate entries. Copies all your information over and just starts it over on a new day. So, now you have proper tracking across the board. The other thing that we've changed is the activities table. So, this is one of the first views of both what we call the data table, 
But one of the changes we've made is that we've now grouped time and expenses onto one page. Currently in Clio, you have it in two separate pages. And obviously, one of those challenges is that you're, if you're trying to get a clear view of a matter that you're working on or a particular client you're working with over a time period, you're having to click back and forth between the two tabs. We've now bundled it all into one page to make it easier for you to see. You'll get a real clear view of how, how that matter is going, what expenses are out outstanding, and what, uh, what time entries have been created. But it's also really easy to switch between the, the two, two tabs. We, we allow you to really simply filter it. With this real simple click, one click, like that, and you filter the expenses. And there's no reloading of the page. The table just filters it. And you're back, you're into just expenses rather than having both. So whereas in the previous Clio, you probably spend 10, 15 seconds cycling through the different tabs, now within less than a second, you'll be able to move between your time and entries. So hopefully that'll save you a lot of time, which is what the purpose of the timekeeper is to do. So that's the time, timekeeper. We've covered matters. And let's talk about the calendar. Great. So Jack gave you all a look at our upcoming calendar, and I'm, I'm really excited. I think it's a gorgeous calendar, and I care about that because my team worked on this. <laughs> so um, some of the great things about calendar and, and the way that we were thinking about calendar is calendar primarily needs to communicate information back to you. It needs to tell you what's coming up, what you need to worry about. So in redesigning it, Jack called it beautiful, but beautiful is not the intent. What we want to make sure is that that information is clear, that you can understand it. The color coding is not just for fun. It's to make sure that it's very easy to tell apart what you're seeing. In the previous calendar, um, not the greatest color choices, but generally hard to read. That's actually the, the prime feedback that we've gotten is that it's hard to use. And so uh, when we preview an actual entry in the past, you would get this kind of tiny little, tiny little box. And now we've got much larger, clearer, and easier to use details. So you don't even have to navigate to the event detail to understand. You can just pop this right open, take a look, and get on to doing the work that you want to do. Here's a day view. This is, again, just your ability to look at the, just the day ahead of you and be able to quickly see conflicting appointments, um, what's coming up, and all of that great stuff. So I'm really excited about Calendar. It's coming a little bit later. Uh, it's going to be in about October that we're going to start to put that into the beta. Uh, but I'm really excited about what we're bringing to the table. I got one more thing to show you in the case management area, and that, that's search. And it's one of the things that I'm super excited about, because most of the other work that you're seeing is the, my team worked on it. Uh, and search was one of the things that I actually got to work on. So I'm extremely excited. I, I put a lot of time into this. And, uh, and I think it's one of the great ways to really show off how fast Clio is. And here's uh, one comment from Kevin Vela. Huge props on the search results. He loves what he's seeing from there. And as, as Ernie mentioned earlier, it's more and more common now, especially as your firm has gotten larger, to navigate in Clio with search. And search hasn't always lived up to your expectations. There's been a little bugginess, and even worse, it's slow. And we've changed both of those two things. We have an entirely new back-end technology uh, that we're using to make it more powerful. And in, with the quick search bar, one of the things that we aim to do is make search more accurate for you, that you're getting more of the results when you want it. And with the new search bar, and we've actually been testing new search for the last couple months in previous Clio, but now we're rolling it out in, in new Clio as well. In previous Clio, when we rolled it over, over the last couple months, it used to be that 70% of the time, you'd be able to find the thing that you wanted in the search bar with the quick search. So the drop down, you would type it in. Seven out of 10 times, you would find what you wanted to, uh, to look for. Ever since we rolled out the new search over the last two months, that number has increased to 78% of the time. So a full 8% increase in, in accuracy. The other thing that's happened is not only are you finding it within the quick search bar, you're actually finding it as the first result. You're not having to read down anymore. So it used to be that about 71% of the time, it would be the first item in the list. We're now up to 84% of the time that you're getting the first, uh, the first item. And so I'm really excited about that. Uh, now, if you aren't able to find what you want in quick search, you'll end up on the global search page. And whereas in the past, you just got dumped a bunch of information. Here's all these items. And, but you couldn't tell why you got given it. It didn't show what matched. What was the piece of information? So you were looking for John Smith, and you ended up with everyone who was a Smith in your search results. And say, like, well, I, I'm, I want John Smith. That's the one that I want. So now you'll be able to see in the, in the right-hand side, what the reason it was matched for. 
So you'll be, see, be able to see, oh, it was a custom field that I had set up that I asked for that. It was a related contact that, uh, that's in there for John Smith. I'm not looking for the related contact. I'm looking for my client, John Smith, and that's the information I want. So the, the part about being more accurate actually plays out in a really big way, that this global search page is really a last resort for you. If you can't find it in quick search, this is where you end up. And I'm really, really excited to report that the accuracy of search results have improved so much that in May and June, where we're still using the previous Clio search, our customers were going to that page about a million times a month. And in July, we shipped the new search to our customers using the previous Clio. And you're spending 35% less time visiting that page because you're finding it in quick search. So instead of waiting 10 seconds for this page to land, you're immediately finding it within half a second. So super excited about that. So not only are they more accurate, though, they're also much, much faster. And I want to show this off to you. So we did a before and after comparison of the old search system and the new search system. And we're going to watch how long this takes. It's the exact same account. We just uh, flip back and forth between new Clio and old Clio. Same data. We're going to search for the word matters. So I'm just going to hit play. And the timer will start when the user clicks on search all categories. Two seconds, three, four, five, six, almost seven. About seven seconds on all search. Let's see the new one. So same word, exact same word, same account. So he's going to type in matters, 1.26 seconds. So let's see that side by side. <laughs> So I'm going to play this side by side again to really illustrate that point. Waiting, waiting. There we go. So in this scenario, that's five times faster. And in our testing, we've actually seen the results as much as 20 times faster for our customers. You're going less to the global search page to get these results because quick search is better. But when you do go there, five, tw 10, 20 times faster. And we know that search is a big deal. We get millions of search requests every week from our customers. So hopefully that'll be a big change for, for how you use Clio, that you're going to be able to rely on us more dependably uh, to get you the information that we want. And this is just step one. We still have a lot of information that we, we want to add in, into search. So uh, when you give it a try, let us know what you're looking for, and we can fine tune those results. If you're a power user of search, if you're one of those people in Google that types, uses Boolean, you use uh, you know, exceptions, and ca you categorize, and, uh, and, and so forth, we can actually support that. But let us know what you're looking for. So really excited about that. So that's all the case management aspect of, that we wanted to show you. The last part we wanted to walk through is about the billing and payments workflow. Jack gave you a quick preview. We're super excited about this. As, as he mentioned, we're, going, we're taking customers from an hour and a half of getting their bills done to five minutes. So huge, huge benefits. And Ernie's going to take you through a walkthrough of that. Great. So we'll, we'll start with billing. And, and number one, maybe I should ask, uh, how many people in the room love billing week? Yeah, we got one. one. One person, OK. OK. We got one, at least. <laughs> no, nobody else likes billing? <laughs> we knew this was a challenge we needed to face, and we needed to, get to make billing as simple and as easy as possible. We needed to remove steps so that billing could be as automated as possible. So I'll take you through some of the details. Now, number one, we have a list of just, uh, this is a list uh, in a data table. And data table, Eric mentioned earlier, is really what we consider like a list of information. That's kind of how we need to look at a lot of things. But the data table itself has been drastically improved from where we were previously. Now, number one, we had pretty inconsistent data tables in the previous Clio experience. So when I talked about design language, data table was one of these pieces that took us actually several months to design. The power of the data table now is, is pretty significant in a, in a range of ways. What we have are, number one, um, a lot more density. You can see almost twice as many entries on screen as you were able to before. You're able to see your state of affairs much more quickly. We've added color coding. Here it's just the drafts, but if you selected the all state and looked at all of the bills, you'd be able to see by color coding in a single column where the state of everything is. We're also able to offer now resizing of columns. So depending on the actual amount of information in any one of those, you can make those smaller or larger to suit your needs. 
Um, at the bottom of the page, uh, a really highly requested feature was being able to show more results per page, and now we've enabled that. We can now show 200 results per page, but it's customizable. Customization is something that you'll hear and see a lot of in the new Clio experience. We're, we're working with a wider range of customers than ever with really diverse needs, practicing different types of law with different size firms and different setups. Even two firms that practice the exact same type of law and deal with the same cases can operate really differently. So we knew that Clio needed to be customizable down to the user to make sure that was really powerful. One thing I want to show you here on the top right is uh, the column customization. So we've now got all these columns across the page, but again, when we talk about customization, we know that some of this information just might not be relevant to you, not to, just to your maybe practice in the way that you work, but maybe depending on where you are in the month. Potentially billing week, maybe you want to uh, remove some of the columns because they're just not applicable. They don't help you take action. So now you're going to be able to remove those and take those out of view. And, and soon, we'll be able to have those saved per user. So every user in your firm can have a different view of the same information. Now, Jack talked about this earlier when we look at a bill, and, and I'm really excited. And I'm not going to show the previous one because we don't need to go through that again. But we look at the new one, and I'm, I'm really excited about some of the changes that we've made. And we got some great feedback from, from our customers, but they just talked about the fact that now when you're making changes to your bill, you see them right away. You don't have to bounce up and down the page to make sure that bill is what you want it to be. This is all about efficiency and saving you time. There's no reason that you should have to invest that much energy into solving these problems. One of the pieces of our design language that you're going to see more and more in the new Clio experience is something we call the full page modal. That's going to pop out from the bottom of the page. And uh, we have big plans for it, so this is just the very start. But in this record payments flow, we know that while you are trying to record payments, you are going to be focused. But what we want to do is ensure that you can actually return to where you were previously. So our use of modals is all about context. How do we make sure that you can take an action that may require all of the screen real estate that's available to you, but when you're finished, you're right back where you started so you can take action on the next set of things. Now, in a majority of cases, what you'll see is that um, when you go to record payments, you'll already have a client selected because you'll be coming through a matter or a client or looking at a bill already. Once a client is selected, what we're doing on the right side in the top right is actually previewing all of the accounts that are connected to that client. You no longer have to pick through the different accounts and, and try to figure out where funds are actually available. We'll preview, for you the, we'll preview that for you right away. So when you actually have to select the payment source, it's going to be obvious. You know that there are the funds available. You don't have to try multiple times to make that happen. So Jack already stole my animation straight out of my deck that I built. But once again, this really awesome bulk payment, um, and this is something that if, if you're interested in this, if you love to talk about billing, um, Stephen Harbrook, a PM, product manager in the lab, he's the guy to talk to, and Irina, uh, one of our designers, they're, the t they're two of the team that worked on this, but they can take you through this in detail and show you all the cool stuff we've done. But again, if you're going to record $2,200 of payments, we'll automatically apply that from the oldest bill to the more recent one. So less clicks, less work, less thinking. One other great feature is um, for those of you who already use Clio Payments, we've now unified the flow into a single one. So you can now record credit card payments the same way that you currently record payments by check. And because we know that users who accept credit cards actually get paid an average of 40% faster, or about 11 days on average, we're also going to help customers who aren't signed up with Clio Payments. We're going to help them get set up. We're going to make sure that they understand the benefit to their business. As we look at how we can help them, uh, we want to make sure that this is something that they've heard about and understand what impact that can have, and that they can compete with eight-year-olds running lemonade stands in public parks. I wonder if they had a business license. Hmm? <laughs> so that gets us to our third and last unique value, outcomes over outputs, because what you're asking for is that you want to have a better law firm. You want to have a more efficient law firm. So it's not enough for us to offer credit card payment support, but we have to, th but we have to think about ways to uh, help you actually collect more payments. Your, your goal when you say, I want to, uh, or I hope your goal is when you say, I want to accept credit cards, is that you want to get paid faster, and you want to collect more money. 
When we talk about helping you, helping you work on your matters and make you more efficient, it's about having more time in your day. Spending, being able to spend less time on business development because you're so busy working on your cases and being effective and handling more customers. So we're really focused on utilization rate and helping you get paid rather than necessarily focusing on a specific piece of functionality. That we actually see this as a whole ecosystem in the application. So in sum, we have over 220 improvements that we're shipping to, today to, to our customers. Everything from making Clio more readable to making it faster than ever with things like search, to new functionality like applying trust funds automatically when you approve your bills, uh, to recording bulk payments. But we're not done yet. We still have a lot more to come. This is just, for me, the first milestone. Uh, the Apollo missions, I think there were about 11 of them that, that launched into to space, multiple missions on the moon. And I like to think of what we're doing today as just step one. And we're hoping to get more feedback from you. I'm hoping that we can visit you more often and learn more from you. And to sum up, uh, I don't know if Lori's in the audience. Lori, are you in here? No? So Lori is one of our CCCs, and she gave this feedback to us. And, and I would say I feel the same way about it. We're super excited about what we've done so far, uh, but we still have a lot to do. And to wrap this up, I want to share one story with you about one of our customers that I found really inspiring. So this is Kevin Vela. Uh, I spent a couple days with him uh, in Dallas. Um, he, he's one of our original customers. He's been with us for seven years. Kevin's a really interesting type of customer, and I think he's, what's happened with his firm is, is, is very instructive of the way that Clio was trying to think about what we're trying to do. So when, Clio, when Kevin first started using Clio, it was a two-person firm. It was just the two of them working away. They wanted to start their own business. And today, there's 14 attorneys in the firm, and Kevin's a, a mentor to lots of startup founders in Dallas. Really inspiring guy. Their, their whole firm is. I, I love spending the two days with them. The thing that, that was really interesting in my visit with Kevin is that early on in the days, Kevin would send feedback to us. Hey, I want you to do this. I want this feature. And as his firm has grown, as his business has grown, his questions have changed. Nowadays, he's asking questions like, hey, is this the best way to do it? What are other people doing? Do you have some more information on this? Because I think this is what I want to try to do. And that's why when we talk about our three values, obsessing about customers, inventing on your behalf, and focusing on outcomes over uh, uh, outputs, that it's really important for us to gather this information. We have 150,000 users that have been using our product, and we're learning about what those best practices are. To wrap that up, how do you learn more? The first one is visit the Clio lab, try out the new Clio, learn more about it, and give our team feedback. Uh, the second one is the tender sessions. We've got about 20 sessions that we're going to get more of a deep dive into Apollo. We've got step-by-steps -step through billing, step-by-steps -step through the calendar, through, through matters, and, and so forth. And the last one is invite us to visit and, uh, and chat. Go on a video call, screen share with you, walk you through things, have you show us how you do things. That really, really matters to us, and more than happy to fly out to your city. We'll bring a team of people, product managers, designers, and developers. And if you've got the time, we will spend a day, two days in our office, because we'd love to learn from you. Uh, so to wrap up again, uh, Ernie and myself, that's our contact details. Please feel free to follow us on, on Twitter. Uh, thanks so much for your time. We, we hope you're excited by, by where we're at today and also where we're going. Thanks so much. <laughs>